Hi, I'm Kate Ferdoni. And I'm Michael Gavlin. Welcome back to Arts District on Rocky Mountain PBS. Our first story takes us behind the scenes of the Denver Center for the Performing Arts for a recent production of the musical Oklahoma. It was the local debut of theater company artistic director Chris Coleman. The show reimagined Rogers and Hammerstein's classic, setting the production in an all African American town. Through our content partnership with the DCPA, we bring you the sights and sounds of Oklahoma. Oklahoma is my directorial debut in Denver. I couldn't be happier that it is something like Oklahoma that I think has a lot of entry ramps for a lot of different people, a lot of different tastes. And I'm particularly excited that it is an all black cast telling this extraordinary American story. We forget that it was revolutionary in its day. It hit a moment in musical theater history where story, music, dance were all linked and we're all serving to kind of move the story together in a way that hadn't been done. And it's about grabbing your piece of the American dream. One of the things that I learned was that in Oklahoma in 1907, the year before it becomes a state, there were 50 all black towns. And that piece of information blew me away. And it began to kind of work its way into my imagination. What would it be like to see a community of black actors tell this story. In fact, you know, one of the primary threads of the story is, you know, going from being, you know, a cowboy who goes from place to place to place and from girl to girl to girl to settling down and building a house and building a family, building a community, investing. And that is basically Curly's arc in the story. And it's the story of the community as well. So the conflicts are all the same, just told through different eyes. Jokes. When I was told how we're going to do this show, the most important thing was to make sure that our production was very specific to having an all African American cast and what it meant in that time period. When the audience first walks in, they see a show act, which is advertisements for these townships that were forming f specifically for African American communities. They were advertisements for cities like Red Bird and Taft, and they would state specifically that these are communities where you will feel safe. For me, it was important that the show Curtain had these actual artifacts, pieces of history, so that we really drive home the fact that this really happened, that this is all true. It's not just a footnote in history, but that it's like an important chapter in history. The way I approached this project was to keep it pretty spare and to just have, for each scene, one large object on stage. You know, so much of the play takes place at Laurie's house. I created a house that was a slightly forced perspective because that's what's going to fit on that stage. To put the whole entire house would have required maybe twice the amount of depth. The sky for our show is not a painted drop. It's not a projection. The clouds you see on stage are actually dimensional clouds. It's done in layers so that the clouds is a separate layer from the sky, which means that you can light them separately. So we are actually lighting it the way the sun would in reality, you know? So we can get a wide range of looks from sunrise to afternoon to sunset to some much more theatrical abstract looks for the Dream Ballet. The casting process for me was extremely important because we wanted to show diversity not only in color, but in sizes, in shapes, in body types, in thinking. The African American community is a diaspora of so many different blends and mixes, and we couldn't have an all skinny young town. So it's great to have curvy women up there, it's great to have men up there who are strong, and it's great to have different ages up there and different people at, at points in their lives and also different colors. We have people who are lighter, darker, it runs the gamut. Dancers are athletes, but I think first we're artists. And I think that's the difference because how many football players you know have to sing and act while they're catching a football. So I think dance is the intersection between art and athleticism, especially in this show because these people are dancing. Everybody is dancing in this show from the oldest to the youngest. With Oklahoma, the script is already written. The music is already written. The choreography is not already written. So a lot of times they just say, these points need to happen 
in the ballet, and that's all I have to go off of. The good thing about this particular version of the ballet is there's injections of African-American culture. Like for example, during the wedding, we're jumping the broom. In American theater, a lot of times you don't see African-Americans really doing ballet or doing movement like that. Unless you go to Alvin Ailey or Dance Theater of Harlem or Lula Washington or Cleo Parker Robinson or any other predominantly black company, you see it, but a lot of people aren't exposed to that. So I thought I was very fortunate to be able to bring things to the forefront of people's minds when they come to see this show. People need to see Oklahoma because they are now getting to see it from a different point of view. A lot of times we've seen each other from a different point of view, we've seen America from a different point of view, we've seen the world from a different point of view. So you might as well come see some good dancing and see another point of view. The Denver Center for the Performing Arts has a full schedule of upcoming events and ticket information at denvercenter.org.